Centenarians, Rules of Life, Italy. Italy, frozen in majestic monuments and the heiress of the Roman Empire. It is one of the main world centers of tourism, fashion, and wine. According to statistics, Italy is among the top three European countries in quantity of super centenarians, people who have reached 100 years old. Italy has one big advantage in this silent competition for life expectancy. Sardinia. Located to the west of the Apennines, the island is most often referred to as the Island of Centenarians. The city on a ferry is located in the mountainous regions in the heart of Sardinia. 200 stone houses compactly stuck to a steep hill. Time flows here slowly and flexible, like for students sitting in a boring lesson. Nine hundred inhabitants of Anaferi live in the same long ago formed routines. Each season has its occupation. They are into farming and animal breeding. They make wine and olive oil. They breed sheep. A shepherd's work is hard. Sometimes we run sheep for 20 kilometers. We slept under the sky. We ate little. It was a hard life. First of all, for me, of course, it's very interesting just to see those people who are over a hundred years old. I think it's interesting for anyone, but for us more so because we study aging. And secondly, to see how these people live, what they live for, who was around them, how their ancestors lived. I think that all is very important and perhaps by looking at them and then by looking at centenarians in other places, we can determine some general patterns, why these people live so long. He retired from shepherding on Onaferi in his 60s in the last century, but rest only started 10 years ago. Until he was 92, this elder worked in the garden and on the farm. Now his life is communication with relatives, some television, and daily walks. I like the calm, quiet life without any fuss, in order to not hurt anything, because all my life I have worked hard. But I survived, and I'm still alive. I'm relaxing now. I'm enjoying my life. Centenarians, this is definitely a certain phenomenon, and it is interesting to know, in fact, what it involves, what correlates to it. Climate, diet, and cultural practices, family, relationships with family, in general, more or less all, stress, lack of stress, the pace of life, that kind of thing. The Roman ferry arrives in Sardinia with the dawn, in the early morning. The first point of our destination, the city of Sassari. It is located in the northwest of the island. In this city lives and works a person who is personally acquainted with every Sardinian centenarian. We have in Sardinia at least 1.6 million inhabitants, yet only 35,000 families. And in these families, there are 370 centenarians. In total, our archive recorded data on 3,000 super seniors starting from 1866. So we have here a permanent presence of this age phenomenon. And when it's such a wealth of material at hand, it would be a sin not to take advantage of it. University of Sassari professor Luca Deana is an expert on centenarians. He has been studying the aging achievements of his countrymen for 16 years. Staff at his laboratory regularly inspect all the inhabitants of Sardinia who have stepped past the 100-year milestone. 
There are several factors that explain this unique phenomenon of longevity. We are interested in everything, but above all, genetics. We are studying the genomes of our centenarians and their close relatives. Hello. I am glad to meet you. Welcome to the island of centenarians. This land sets the record by the number of centenarians, and anyone who comes here gets a chance to live up to such an advanced age. So you too are now a candidate for centenarians. So what's going on here? Here we process the blood samples that we select during visits to homes of older people. About once a year we update our data bank in order to understand what happens to the human body when it gets old. When samples are received in the lab, we separate the serum and plasma cells, then select cells from the blood for DNA. Let's go, I'll show you our unique collection. This refrigerator is at a temperature of minus 20 degrees, where we keep part of the samples of genetic material at our disposal. Each number corresponds to particular patients. Here we have only a code, because we cannot write the names or personal data by law. See here is the DNA for longevity. Perhaps it is this tube that will reveal the secrets of longevity. So how many, so how many centenarians are there in this box? This freezer has DNA samples from 80 elders. Only in this. And there are three chillers. Two here, and one is in another laboratory. Not bad, right? Assembled in the small town of Sassari, the Centenarian database is one of the largest in the world. DNA, serum, and plasma from this laboratory is studied by many European gerontologists. In addition to genetic research, Professor Diana set himself another ambitious goal, to make a family tree of all Sardinian centenarians. Sorry for the mess. Here comes the daily correspondence of elderly people living on our island. Just today, I received a fax from a small commune named Saligo, which has the seal of the municipality, the official signature and certificate of authenticity. We had information that a man of this city was born in 1866, and though he died in 1966, they said he was 100 years. We have made a request. Here, write to us that in fact he wasn't only 99 years old. That is for us a man that is not for our group. And how reliable are the data? This is the official document, official information on the form. I have no reason not to trust her. Most importantly, instead of every day going to the 377 communes of Sardinia, we don't waste our time and work directly on our targets. In Italy, there are special administrative territorial divisions, a region, province, and municipality. As a rule, the smallest administrative unit of the country brings together one city and its surroundings. The largest of the communes is Rome, with a population of nearly 3 million people. In the smallest, there is no more than 40 people. In Russia, such settlements would be considered as villages or hamlets. In Italy, it is a city with a mayor and a municipality. The first mention of Onoferi dates back to the 14th century. Among the other Italian municipalities, this city stands out not only for its antiquity. Here, among the approximately 930 residents of the village, well, small town you might say, are five people who are more than 100 years old. In Italy, including Sardinia, it is only about 22 to 25 people per every 100,000 people. That is, this concentration of centenarians is absolutely fantastic. In this sense, it is certainly an anomaly. The trip from Sassari to Onoferi is two hours away by car inland. Our Moscow biochemist has a very interesting companion on this trip. My name is Piero, Piero Pes. I am 62 years old. I was born in Olbia, in Sardinia, in the northeast uh, of the island. Piero Pes has lived all his life in Sardinia. He is the author of a book about the history of this region. According to the ethnographer, today at his native island there are two different Sardinias. At least two Sardinias living in the same island. Sardinian people living around the coast. People are more open, even because they receive a 
cultural influences from all the parts of the world, especially on summertime. But in the central part of the island, everything changes. It's a very different environment, a part of a different society. It was a sort of was created uh, when uh, many Sardinian people refused the uh, and so people been living, uh, I mean, with not written laws from everybody, their respect, no matter who was leading the power in the island, they were living uh, on their own. Developed traditions, they developed a culture, very different, and especially, overall, a language. So in the central part of the island, Sardinian speaks, speaks Sardinian language. For hundreds of years, these people have lived in the mountains in relative isolation. Professor Diana thinks this created a closed world with a limited gene pool that gives scientists a unique opportunity to find in the genes of the first settlers of Sardinia a source of longevity. There is a series of archaeological studies and documents showing that there have always been centenarians. For example, there are tombstones, aged about 2,000 years ago, when Sardinia belonged to the Romans. These plates have a label indicating the names and surnames of centenarians of that era. Usually there is a well-aged person in the same family every 2,000 people. According to our data, in Sardinia there are families where this step is much smaller, every 120 people. In general, research data on how often there are, how you say, long-lived dynasties, there isn't very much. That is, the basic data that we have, it is more or less anecdotal. But the study on how inherited longevity is in general shows that there is a hereditary factor, but it does not normally play a primary role. That is, it affects, but is not a major contributor. It is believed that approximately 30% of the variability in life expectancy is caused genetically, while 70% is the result of basic environmental factors. Demographic data confirms that living up to 100 has become more often in the last few decades. In the 70s of the last century, centenarians in Europe could be counted with the fingers of one hand. Today in France, England, Italy, and Sweden, for every 100,000 inhabitants are 20 to 26 of these super centenarians. But how is it possible to find out the local history of longevity in a single small town such as Onaferi? The easiest way? Visit the city cemetery. You see, Boris, this man is 95 years old right. when he died. Oh, yeah. We have all the women. That woman was 92 years old. Mm -hmm. That man, 90 years old. Here also, yeah. yeah in here, people in this village, people live longer. Yeah. We have one, I think, there. She's a woman. She was 100 years old when she died. Mm -hmm. Now I show you. She's there. Look at that. Giovanna Brau. She was born in 1886 and she died in 1986. Oh, yeah. A few days, just a few, two months later uh. than she. The results of a small cemetery inspection showed many residents had lived to 90 years in Onaferi. Giovanna Blau died in 1986 and was the only one buried here as a centenarian. That scientific study is not enough for serious scientific findings. You should have solid evidence of the fact of birth and length of life of a particular candidate in centenarians. Reliability is one of the main problems facing gerontologist historians. There are a large number of examples of what is called a data falsification or inaccuracy of the data. If a person is now 100 years or more, this means that he was born at the beginning of the last century. 
And uh, of course, it is quite a big problem. The accuracy of logging and how records of these events have survived. Come, Boris. Yep. Here is the invitation to the centenarian, uh -huh. Manette Damurja. And in here, she invites everybody for her party. Then they have the Saint Mass in the Church of Santa Ana. And okay. then the, the lunch for everybody. Uh huh. It's oh, great. that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice tradition. An invitation to a jubilee has hung in the main building of the commune since 2011. This is clear proof that in Sardinia, old age is an occasion for respect and overall honor. Actual evidence of longevity can be found in the books of the parish and municipal records. Guests from Moscow requested the details about all five still alive centenarians from City Hall employees. The oldest resident in Ona Ferry was the lady from the poster, Filomena Mugia. On September 26, she turned 102 years old. Here she is. She was born in 1911. Her parents were Rafael Mugia, who was 37 years old, and his wife, Paola Dobra, who were living at Via Nacionale 36. The baby girl was named Filomena. She was born on September 26th. Further study of metrics revealed the sensational fact. Two of the five local centenarians are relatives. Brother and sister were born with a difference of two years and have lived until now. 1913, here's Giuseppe, October 23rd. Rafael Mugia came to two employees from the same institution. He lived at the same address on Via Nazionale with his wife, Paola. They had a male child who was named Giuseppe. Sardinia is quite interesting in the fact that here a century or more ago were accurate records, strict, verified, which are duplicated at the registration department. Well, actually in the municipality and in the church book. In my view, what we have seen here is trustworthy. Our short investigation is completed. Boris is very close to the main goal of his journey, encounters with longevity. The scientist has never seen people have lived for a whole century. Buongiorno. Ciao, Boris. Hello. Come va? Bene. Great. <laughs> Beautiful place. Beautiful. So this is the house. E qui abbiamo la centenaria. Aha. La centenaria che ci sta aspettando. So we go in. Filomena, the most elderly resident of Onaferi, spends her days next to her favorite place, the fireplace. The aging process is primarily related to the violation of the body's energy supply. Over time, the cell's power plants, the mitochondria, begin to function much worse. These intercellular structures recycle with oxygen nutrients into energy. In old age, mitochondrial efficiency decreases sharply. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? We are from the University of Sassari, and I've come to visit you. With me is my colleague from Russia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All's good with your health? Yes, of course. How can you live to be 102? I don't know. As a rule, centenarians are inactive. They lead a sedentary lifestyle. They have cold hands. They need constant warmth. In this house, the oldest resident of Onaferi is surrounded by warmth and the care of four daughters, five grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Did you work a lot? Very much. And what did you do? I collected olives. And what's your favorite food? What my mom used to do. Tell me, wine. Do you drink wine? No. And meat? Do you eat meat? A little, only on holidays. Filomena's mother lived to be 87 years old. 
her father to 76. The 102-year-old Filomena has kept good health. Her medical records show no serious illnesses. This elder moves virtually independently around the house. She does not complain about sleep or appetite. Surprisingly perfect, a woman of 102 years, albeit slowly, but understands quite clearly. She reacts to jokes. She tells what she likes to eat, what she doesn't like to eat, doesn't drink wine. In general, her mind is quite clear. The centenarian Giuseppe Mugia, Filomena's younger brother, lives on the other side of Anaferi and is celebrating something special today. His friend has come for a visit. Giuseppe and Giovanni are of the same age. Sardinia is one of the few places on earth where people really know each other a hundred years. They really have known each other since childhood and still visit each other. Accordingly, Giovanni, he too in March will celebrate 101 years. Struck by the fact that in addition to relatively clear ideas and the ability to respond adequately to what is happening, he is kept in very good shape physically. If I had met his grandfather in the street, I would have thought that he were 85 years old, probably somewhere like that. Both elders like to eat. On this table is the traditional cuisine of Sardinia. The basis of the local cuisine, products from grain, pork, and vegetables, several types of cheese and red wine. A special place is occupied with olives and olive oil. How many times, every day? How many times a day does your grandfather eat? Three times a day, plus lunch and some snacks. What is his favorite dish? <laughs> Uh, pasta. pasta with meat sauce, mm-hmm. uh, meat, especially ham, roast pork, that's his favorite dish. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and wine? Every day, every day, at lunch, dinner, and supper. Sardinia is a paradise for gourmets who prefer simple, natural food. These kitchens have no culinary restrictions. The main rule, always use fresh food and measure your food intake. And it is very important to consume seasonal products. We like variety on the table. We are not eating only a main hot dish. We eat an appetizer, first course, second, dessert, fruit. A bit of everything. At least once a day we eat pasta. Every other day, meat. A normal dinner contains approximately 680 calories, 34 grams of fat, 84 grams of carbohydrates, 30 grams of protein. This is 100 grams of product. That is a very high calorie dinner, high in carbohydrates. Wine is to be used with restraint, but regularly. We say one glass a day keeps the doctor away. The most amazing thing is that being undernourished is absolutely unacceptable. These people are perfectly happy and often eat deliciously. They eat meat, they eat a sausage, they eat fat, they like to drink wine, they drink it often. Generally speaking, it is generally considered that serious moderation in eating is associated with longevity. But here is not what we observe, rather the opposite. Such a dense diet dictates the way of life of Sardinian farmers, active and energy intensive. In life, people's daily physical labor outdoors provides a substitute for gyms and fitness centers. With a minimal amount of free time and the eternal question, where to go? I have always worked, always, because I like to work. First I was a peasant, then I bought a truck, I carried stones and wood. Until I was 93, I was doing chores all around the house. In my life, I never refused to work. I never skipped a day. They follow their traditions. They live uh, in in quiet places. They are not under stress because they are tied to the country. They're tied to the country life and they they are tied to their traditions.
In Sardinia, they say, a cheerful mood can replace food and wine at least for one day. European scientists believe that Sardinians' natural optimism is an essential part of their longevity. All local centenarians here have similar traits. They are balanced and stubborn. That is, they do not give up, do not lose heart, and methodically and calmly overcome difficulties. But what should be emphasized in particular, they are very positive. At any age, Sardinians do truly love life in all its manifestations. Our expert, Boris Fanuk, decided personally to find out what moods people had who crossed the 100-year mark. The standard test for depression in the elderly consists of 15 questions. Here's how the centenarians answered some of them. The question is, are you happy with your life in general? I'm happy. All is well. Do you often get bored? Rarely. When there's rain. Are you in a good mood usually? Yes, yes, good. Okay. Uh, do you often feel helpless? When I am going up a hill by myself, I do not need help. Interpretation of the questionnaire shows both have longevity with no apathy. While maintaining good physical shape, Giovanni Maria had a greater love for life more than his old friend. I am well. I am glad. I rest. I live like I'm in paradise. With more than 100 years, the former shepherd of Onaferi demonstrates remarkably good spirits and autonomy. He dresses himself, he walks, and adequately responds to situations. The old timer still has good sight and hearing. All these factors made it possible to conduct another study with mixed results. I would like you to make a simple test, to draw a clock with the time 12.45. Just a clock? Neurophysiologists check the cognitive and mental abilities of older people by using a clock test. Simple at first glance, the job has put the 100-year-old man in a dead end. The experimental conditions allow for simplifying the task. In the second stage of the test, he should draw an arrow on the example dial. And you will make the time 12.45. Again, the old timer cannot complete the exercise. With age, people strongly lose the ability to perform new and unexpected problems. And partly, this test then needs to check how much a person has, so to say, ossified thinking. There should be a big consideration for our specific person who we tested because he never went to school. Therefore, all the same, I believe we cannot interpret this test as his lack of ability to perform basic intellectual tasks. Now? 15 minutes past 12. Mm. The arrows of the two alarm clocks in the longevity room are frozen. These clocks stand still, a good symbol for the life of this passport owner. The biological clock of aging has slowed its progress. Why did the destructive process of body decay fail? How can local centenarians cheat time? Genetic predisposition, power supply system, character traits? Each of these components affects the lifespan. There is one more point, which brings together all the Sardinian centenarians. In all cases where we observed extreme longevity, they have had a great relationship with family, were taken care of, they were surrounded by care and they felt needed, which in general resonates well with Skulachev's theory about aging, that necessity of someone else, be it students, children, grandchildren, greatly affects the mental state and physical condition of elderly people and gives them some additional charging. Evolution selected this for such a mechanism because when nobody wants people, they feel useless in society. From the point of view of the general community's people, 
He was bad. He takes the place of those who are young. Strong family ties, support, and attention to their seniors are the signs of Sardinian families and the main tradition of this extraordinary island. Indeed, these old people are rarely alone. What are they thinking at this moment? What is remembered? Dad wanted me to work, so I rarely went to dances. I was very fond of dancing. These survivors are a living archive of life. This reserve of wisdom, culture, and traditions, they can give it to the family. Therefore, within families, the long-lived receive all possible love and care. Because of this, they feel more confident. It's an incentive for them and one of the reasons that contribute to a long life. 70-year-old professor Luca Teana is not going to retire. The search for key genes of longevity is the purpose of his life. Diana sends blood samples taken during the visit to the centenarians to the north of Italy, to Bologna. In this laboratory is an Italian scientist of world renown. I am uh, Professor Claudio Franceschi, uh, and uh, I am uh, leading uh, the project GEA, Genetics of Healthy Aging. Uh, I am uh, 70. Claudio Franceschi was one of the first who, in fact, attracted the attention of the scientific community the fact that it is not necessary to study aging in general and healthy longevity. That is exactly what we have seen here. Thus, he can be said to be the number one European specialist in this matter. The University of Bologna is the oldest in the world. It was founded in 1088. Immunologist Professor Claudio Franceschi directs the research project from this office, which involves 24 European laboratories and the Beijing Genome Institute in China. The purpose of the project, to find the causes of phenomenally healthy longevity. Characteristic of the centenarians is that they uh, do not have uh, insulin resistance, which means that uh, uh, their capability to use glucose uh, is uh, exceptional. The sleep of centenarians uh, is exceptionally good. Uh, all the phases of uh, the, the, the sleep are... Circadian rhythms, a body's internal clock. They are cycles of biological processes associated with the change of day and night. Ideally, one period of these rhythms is close to the day, 24 hours. Disorder of the biological clock comes with the onset of old age. Elderly people often suffer from insomnia. This is bad for the whole body. Hello. Hello. May I come in? Yes. Thank you. I'm Boris Fenyuk from Moscow. Oh, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm from Skulachev's lab. Oh, from great. Technology. My friend uh, Skulachev. Yes, great. The main interest of Professor Francesca and his colleagues is genetics, uh, the, uh, particularly about one of the latest discoveries of the global study, Centenarians Energy. The number of cellular power plants, mitochondria, in centenarians is higher than in the young. What now is clear is that uh, the two genomes, the mitochondrial genome and the nuclear genomes, cross-talk. Yeah. And the, the cross-talk is essential. If this cross-talk is, uh, is not... The people who nowadays reach a hundred or years or more are exceptional because probably they have uh, 
a peculiar genetics, but a good lifestyle, probably most of the people in the population could reach 90, 95 and older. Claudio Franceschi has worked with the aging problem for 20 years. The basis of the professor's scientific work was his longevity rating. The stupid first rule is to have the right parents, because you inherit from your parents uh, the, the, the genome. And we, have sh sh we show it in a paper that uh, uh, in order to be in good shape when you are 70 or 8. Of course, all are concerned with the question, what do I do to live to be 100 years old? From our trip, I can say that the first thing to do is to move somewhere else, where the climate is warm and mild and there is no winter. The second point is to take care of all people around you, who love you, who care about you, and who need you. And of course, the third, it is desirable that your mom and dad were also centenarians. Then your chances are sharply increased. The Italian expedition in search of the source of longevity is over. In partying, Claudio Francesca shows Boris the source of his inspiration. Well, there are several people who uh, are a uh, hundred or so mm -hmm. year old, and they show when uh, a picture of the younger photos. Yes, a younger I photo. Uh -huh. And uh, for you, I have here Ivan Bolichev. 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 He is 101, and look uh, how many medals. He's a this general, guy, probably. Yeah. Uh, 103, and look how, how you became when you are... Uh, Lucky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> By excluding from the list good luck, biochemist Boris Fanuk summarizes his research trip to Sardinia. The rules for a century of human life are hereditary being wanted by someone and a mild climate.